Welcome, everyone, to Life Beyond Six Feet. I, of course, am Damien from RKB Paranormal, and this is going to be a bonus episode for you guys. Recently, I was a guest on the amazing Paranormal and Spooky podcast, Middle Aged and Creeped Out, and those guys were kind enough to send me the episode to present to you guys as a bonus episode. So hopefully you guys will check it out and, and become a fan of their podcast as you're a fan of mine. So enjoy my interview with the guys from Middle Age and Creeped Out. Hello there. Are you ready to hear tales of the paranormal? Weird. Unexplained. And just plain creepy. If the answer is yes, then welcome to your worst nightmare. But be warned, there's no turning back. Now here are Todd, Sean, and Nate, and they are middle-aged and creeped out. Hey Creepies, welcome to episode 121. Nate is your sound engineer and we are your hosts Todd and Sean and we are middle-aged and creeped out. What is going on gentlemen? Great night on a Wednesday. 121 already, huh? Mm-hmm. Man, that is the number. Quick. Let me check. Yeah. That is 121. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The math is correct. Uh, yeah. I haven't made a mistake in quite uh, a few weeks now. Let, let, let me uh, count my fingers and toes. <laughs> Give me a minute. <laughs> um, I would I would ask my wife to do that, but it. it <laughs> oh, don't do that! Oh, yeah, yeah. We've you seen the picture. Oh, Nate sorry, was, Amy. Uh, <laughs> uh, creepy. She <laughs> he was dry oh, wow. heaving over here. Yeah, I, I didn't think it was that bad. It's not that oh, great, it but it's dry not that, heaving. But it no, just, <laughs> you send him body chills. It's just one of those things. She had know. her she had her one week uh, checkup at the foot doctor yesterday, and they took the wrapping and bandages off and. Uh, so you can see the stitching, and it's uh, it's gnarly is the word I've been using. It's gnarly very gnarly. is a good way to put and you, it. And you thought it was a good photogenic opportunity, huh? <laughs> I did. <laughs> I took a picture of that. I took a pic- I took actually a couple pictures uh, of her heel or of her um, calf that because they did heel surgery, and that that's not that's he'll, pretty minimal. He'll never let her live that down. No, no. Um, our so- our uh, I'm sorry, our daughter uh, Amy sent the picture of it to her, texted, it, and she goes. That's not good. <laughs> she she wasn't quite thrilled with the picture either. And then I and I said, I'm "Hey, no Elijah, doctor, did you see?" It? But I go, "Did you show Elijah?" And she he goes, "I don't want to see that." I go, "Come on, you watch horror movies and blood and guts." And he's like, "Yeah, but it's like because it's real." And it's, I think it's because every it's time I, I mentally think about it, it, still sends chills down my legs. <laughs> Let's see it. <laughs> Maybe I'll post it on. No, I asked her. I go, can, I, oh, don't. I did. Post I asked her yesterday. Wow. I go, "Can I post it on the Facebook group?" She goes, "Do not post that on the Facebook." <laughs> I go. It's, I said, can I do it for my Tuesday aged, terror? It's creepy. <laughs> so I told her I was going to post it on the Tuesday terror. There you go. Post yeah. it and just put a, a, a <laughs> caption underneath there. Get a leg up. <laughs> oh. Something yeah. is a foot. <laughs> Something's <laughs> a foot. There's a le- yeah. Uh, it is pretty pretty gnarly. Uh, but yeah, it is Wednesday, Sean. Uh, That's we're right. recording. Had a nice little guest chat. Um, your guys' week going okay so far? Mm-hmm. Making, yeah. it, making it through? Yeah. Our little bean had her 10th uh, birthday yesterday, oh. so she turned uh, double digits. I told her it's... Ella. Oh, hold on for a while. That's Ella. Happy yep, birthday, Ella. Ella. Um, she, I told her, I said, hold on, double digits are a long time until you so, turn 100, then you get triple digits. So now all four are uh, double digits. That's right. Nice. That is right. Nice. Good luck with mm. that. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Just wait till wait, they're all teenagers. Till, yeah, yeah wait till... Oh, oh my goodness. It's yeah. going to happen. Well, happy yeah. birthday, Ella. That's awesome. Uh, and Nate, you're... Like you said, you're hanging in there, just a little, a little tired. Yeah, yeah, a little I different gotcha. schedule this week as far as sleep. So I got you. Yeah, feeling it a little. Yeah, he's got the toothpicks in his eyes, holding his yeah. eyes up. Yeah, <laughs> like the cartoon characters. <laughs> they're, they're, they're kind of bending. <laughs> Tom and Jerry. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Exactly. That's who I thought of. Yeah. And remember, you see like the, the red veins. You know, they're, exactly yeah. right. Uh, well, we are glad the creepies have joined us. Absolutely, uh, as always. And uh, guess what? Guess what? Oh, what? <laughs> Wait a minute. What was that? Grump, right? Grumpy over here. What? What do you mean by that? I can't you wait. You mean like, You know oh, I can't what? wait. Oh, my gosh. What? Is it joke time? Oh, wait. Oh, it is the don't. dad joke of the show. So, the other day, mm-hmm. you know, I uh, was very hungry, which is all the time, pretty much. So, nothing new there. Uh, I decided to go to McDonald's, and I uh, got a kid's meal. Boy, was the mom and son pissed. I got the kids' meal. Yeah, 
the, the so sun. You got the yes. Yeah, I, I got. I got. I actually did get it. I I, <laughs> I was just waiting for that awkward silence. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. uh, that, dead air. The, 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 <laughs> see, the, I took the kids' meal. See, and I. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. mm-hmm. uh, by the way. <laughs> I thought it's. We need laugh track. I thought I'd get a better reaction. Wah, I, I like wah, that. Wah. Uh, by the way, and I was gonna. Uh, I, I I apologize ahead of time. This was supposed to have been mentioned last week, so I'm calling myself out because it is sponsored. That's awesome. Call so I wanted out. to do the dad joke and then focus on the sponsorship afterwards. So yes, this dad joke is sponsored. Uh, the sponsor is Cody Hill. Now he is the owner of Hillside Lawn Care, uh, based out of Mooresville, Indiana. Uh, and this is the guy that he just completed our landscape at our house a few weeks ago, and it does look amazing. Now, nice. granted, we did not have any landscape, bar- I mean, barely, uh, but no, his, his uh, prices are reasonable. He did a fantastic job, very professional, uh, very easy to work with. Um, he also does lawn mowing as part of the services that he offers, so he does landscaping and mowing. Uh, so contact Cody Hill uh, today for a free quote, and uh, you can reach him by phone at 317 317- Nine three seven one five five one again three one seven nine three seven one five five one or you can check him out on Hillside Lawn Care, which he has a Facebook page. Uh, make sure you tell him that uh, you heard about uh, us on. I'm sorry. Make sure you tell <laughs> 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 tell him that you heard about him on Mako. That's what I meant to That's say. That's a lots of words. Uh, lots of words. Yeah, but no, Cody Hill, uh, great guy, and he does fantastic work. Uh, very, very good. Thank so you, Cody. We are very pleased with our landscape, and uh, we have gotten two or three compliments, which made us feel Sweet. good. Yeah. Uh, great guy, though. He's he's uh, fantastic, very professional. Um, so, yeah, check out uh, Hillside Lawn Care, which is the sponsor of the awesome joke that I just did. We mm-hmm. appreciate our sponsors. We do appreciate we do. our sponsors. We even appreciate our the jokes. And I will say, I go, hey, Cody, what segment? I want to go that far. I said. <laughs> <laughs> I asked him what segment. He goes, oh, dad joke. Uh, oh. Absolutely. Because he said he likes to do dad jokes, and he gets the eye roll and the, uh, you know, from his kids. Well, so. that's the point, isn't it? I said, that's, yeah. Six, <laughs> then that's what you get. <laughs> I mean, you know, you got to get the eye roll. Uh-huh. That means you're, you've are you succeeded. So, yeah. So, give Cody, a, you know, give him a call or check him out on uh, Facebook. So, anyway, it was exciting to have a sponsor for that. Uh, now, I'm going to turn it over to you, Mr. Sean. I suppose you want the first part of the announcements. I'm looking at my show flow notes, and it says first announcements. Check, check. Yeah. Uh, we are here, as always. Um, every show, we are here with uh, the spooky, creepy, paranormal. We are here for the guy time. Mm-hmm. Lots mm-hmm. of fun, but we definitely want to always put this uh, back in focus to uh, the mental health community we are building. Um, so if you need help out there, call or text 988 for any kind of type of mental distress, suicide prevention, or any other type of crisis that you may be experiencing. You can also text 741-741. If you think you need professional counseling, please don't be afraid to do so. Visit stopbullying.gov to help you or someone you know who may be experiencing some sort of bullying. Uh, reach out to our Facebook group, Instagram account, email, or message us for any added support. That is what our Mako family is all about. Amen. Right? And Since day fantastic. one. Fantastic. Fantastic, as uh, Nate says. Mm-hmm. Uh, our friend Shamrock O'Malley mm-hmm. made a nice post the other day she really on did. our Facebook group and yeah. said that she appreciates the community that we've built. And I said, that's what fuels us. That's you those, know. those comments like that. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, they, I mean, trust me, we like to hear... That they love the show and what we talk about, and they think we're awesome. Yeah, I mean, yeah. whatever. Well, this is like, well, Big my, my <laughs> wife tells me that all the time, so kind of get that gets old a little bit. No, uh, all the was, autographs. Are yeah, yeah. Uh, no, but that is exactly what we're talking about. Uh, somebody that appreciates uh, the community that we built. Well, you know, um, but even before we put, when we were putting all the bits and pieces and the foundation of this podcast together during COVID, you and I would have mm-hmm. those discussions, and that was one of the biggest things is that we want to make sure that we're putting something out there, um, and that was beyond this the, exactly. And the emotional sure. support group was uh, and the community was a big part of it. So we mm-hmm. had that in mm-hmm. the as a cornerstone, honestly. So it, I'm so impressed that we've done this the entire time, and that we're going to continue to do it. So I like what we do. You know what we've you got? Like a lot. We've got Nate's. Mm. Uh, he's he's <laughs> impressed. Nate's approval. He is impressed. Uh, Stamp of approval. Yeah, it, uh, Nate approved. We well, then that's all we need. Uh, you know, we like I said, we we want to talk about the creepy, fun stuff, but I mean, it's got to go past that. You know, got to mm-hmm. get a little bit more. That's right. So. That's the fun stuff. This is the serious stuff. <laughs> Are you saying we have depth? Mm. <laughs> You're not going that far. <laughs>
Yeah, I think we do a little bit <laughs> more than I thought we'd ever had. <laughs> uh, no, but yes, uh, thank you for that, Sean. Uh, do you guys have any shout outs? I'm going to say no this time. No, you don't? No. Nate? Mm, yeah, I'm right there with a the no. No? Man, 0 for 2? 0 for well, 2. I, I don't get to go out and play in public <laughs> too much anymore. He doesn't get out. He doesn't what get is out going much. on with <laughs> <laughs> Do all the drivers on the road Nobody today Nobody at Taco Bell that, like I do. You know, hey, <laughs> I don't even get to do that. Johnny Bingo, who waited on me. <laughs> Uh, okay, well, you know what? The I most I do is uh, hit a grocery store on the way out to the camper, and I check myself out, so... <laughs> oh, so you get... To the cashier, Robbie. <laughs> hey, shout, shout out, out yeah, to yeah. myself <laughs> for, for <laughs> the, the, the... Checking out. Fabulous uh, Check <laughs> scanning out. of product and yeah. bagging. <laughs> 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 yeah. Well, well, you know what? That's good. So, yeah. good, good Nate, job. I think you need to call some of these numbers up here that we just gave out. <laughs> Sean, you want to go over that again? <laughs> I, I, I absolutely yeah. do. Well, you know what? I'm going to give a shout out because I felt so bad about forgetting to give his uh, uh, sponsorship. Cody Hill, again, Hillside Lawn Care. Give him a call. Check him out. Hillside Lawn Care on Facebook, 937-1551, area code 317. Again, we are so proud and feel great that we actually have <laughs> some landscape and I think when we've gotten compliment, compliments, people are actually going, it's about time. I think Ooh. that's what they I mean, <laughs> they zero, know it looks good. Zero to hero, great, huh? But I think they're also going, thank you for giving a little more curb appeal to your place. I'm like, don't worry about did, it. Did they think anyway. uh, your your abode was abandoned? <laughs> <laughs> they did. Oh, we didn't know anybody lived there. <laughs> no, Cody, man, I'm telling you, he did a great job. So uh, anyway, my shout out again is to Cody Hill. I'm keeping his information for sure. Uh, yes, <laughs> and he, know. yes, he's great. Okay. Uh, other than that, I don't have any more shout outs. Uh, special announcements, as always, we want to mention our Keeping a Creepy 2023 live show. Uh, it's going to be on Saturday, October 7th from 5 to 9. It is going to be at the Ellis Park train station in Danville, Indiana, and tickets can be purchased for only $15 at the Eventbrite website or the app. Uh, we are going to have fiction author and owner of Anatolian Press, Micah Campbell, and along with paranormal investigator Aaron Egnatz of Hauntings Across America. They will both be our special guests. Uh, we've had them both on our show a couple of times. Uh, we're going to have some good food, good music, some awesome Mako merch for sale, uh, some fun giveaways, so come out for a night of creeped out fun. Uh, it's going to be here before you know it. And then this will be the last time I mention it. I just want to make sure, uh, again, our Mako on location for August 5th. Uh, we have canceled it, our showing, uh, but they are still uh, at the uh, Randolph County Asylum. They still have their tour, uh, flashlight tour from 7 to 8.30. So please go check out that place, but uh, we will not be there. So I just want to make sure, you know. If, uh, if you're going to get my autograph, I won't be there. I apologize. I'm sorry. You know, I, that's what I was going for. <laughs> yeah. We'll get there at some point, though. We will. That's we right. will. And we've got a, a couple more, uh, you know, we're talking about. Uh, we'll get them scheduled, and then we'll, we uh, got plan- we'll have those. Planning yeah. to do, right? Big, big planning. So, coming off of that, Mr. Sean, tell the creepies what this episode's all about. We just had a wonderful guest chat with a new friend of the show. is Damian Christie of RKB Paranormal. He's also the co-host of a podcast called Life Beyond Six Feet. Enjoy, Creepies. Hey, Creepies. We have a special guest on our show for this episode. Uh, He is a co-founder of the RKB Paranormal Team. Uh, He does have a podcast called Life Beyond Six Feet. Uh, Let's bring on Damian Christie. Damian, how are you, sir? Good. How are you guys? We're good. I'll let Sean and Nate say hi to you. Hey, Damian. Hello. Hey. How's it going? We're good. We're good. Thanks for coming on and uh, taking your time. Yeah. Hey, thanks for having me on. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, glad to be able to do this. Um, let's go ahead and just get into the fun stuff. Um, Damien, tell tell our listeners and, uh, of course, us, how did you get into the paranormal? Well, where, where, where do I even begin? <laughs> <laughs> um, I've always been into it ever since I was, like, a little kid. Um, but I really got into it when I was a teenager. Um me and my two best friends growing up, we were all just always just really intrigued by it. And, um, you know, when we, we were the drive, instead of being out on the weekends partying and doing your, your typical teenager stuff, we was out, you know, going to cemeteries and, and breaking into abandoned houses that we heard was haunted and just trying to just trying to figure out if anything is actually going on in these places. And, you know, actually starting a team was something we always talked about, even though this was before all, all the TV shows. We didn't even really knew 
that people would actually do this stuff. And then, of course, when the shows came out, we were like, oh, man, they actually, there's actually people that go out and do this. I, you know, we need to actually do that. And so, you know, we, we still talked about it and talked about it. And then, of course, we got into adulthood and we all got married and started having kids. And that just kind of was put on the back burner, but it was still always there. We always still talked about it. And um, when we really got got really in, into talking about it was about 2008, 2009, my best friend Keith told me about Waverly Hills. Oh yeah. Um, he showed me some stuff online. He's like, "Man, we we got to go to this place. You know, they they let people in there. We we got to go." And in 2011, Keith was a, a police officer in our hometown of Dixon, Tennessee, and um, he was shot and killed in the line of duty. Mm-hmm. And so, the dream of, of us three friends that kind of, you know, kind of came to a, just an unexpected halt whenever he passed away. Um, but it was still something me and our, my other best friend, Josh, who's my co-founder, um, still something we talked about, you know, throughout the years. And then fast forward to 2020, you know, the pandemics shut everything down and, you know, can't really go anywhere. But I'm on vacation from work, so I'm like, you know, I'm still going to go to some of these places that um, probably aren't going to have a lot of people in them regardless. So I'm going to go check out some places that I've wanted to check out. And mm-hmm. Berkeley Mountain State Penitentiary was one of them up in East Tennessee. And so I took a three-hour drive up there by myself one day, you know, checked it out during the day and was telling Josh about it on the way home. And he was like, man, I wish you would have told me. I would have rolled with you. And so me and him went back up there about a week later, you know, did the day thing again and was talking about it on the way home. I was looking at their website and stuff. And I was like, hey, man, they, you know, they allow investigations here. Let's let's get some people together and come back up here and do that. And he's like, yeah, let's, let's do it. And so about a week and a half, two weeks later, we gathered up some friends and went back up there. Um we were there for about seven or eight hours and didn't have no kind of equipment whatsoever. Um, we had a desert recorder and an EMF detector, so we didn't really get to document anything, but we had so much stuff happening throughout the night. <clears throat> Everything from disembodied voices to hearing the cell door slamming shut to having stuff thrown at us. Just so much stuff, we were like, man, this is crazy. And so on the way home, you know, I got to talking to him. I was like, man, you know, we've been talking about this since we were, you know, little kids, teenagers, and, you know, we're on the wrong side of 40. So if we're going to do this thing, we need to go ahead and do it now. And he's like, you know, I, I agree with you. And so told him the name I had in mind, which is RKB Paranormal, and RKB is the initials of Keith. Um, his name was Richard Keith Beller. So we wanted to use that to honor him and kind of still have him with us during our investigations. And so the next morning I messaged my tattoo guy, had him design me a logo. I had a Facebook page up the same day and we had our first official investigation about a month later. And we've been going strong for three years, actually three years yesterday. We, we, we started this team. So happy anniversary. That yeah, is, that's yeah. cool. That is an awesome story. Congrats. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I hate to hear that, uh, you know, the death of your friend, that's, that's horrible. Um, but what a way to honor him, you know, and, uh, He'd keep be his so memory. Proud, yeah, too. he would. Yeah. And, uh, that's right. awesome. You you know used his initials. That's cool. Because I was going to ask you what the RKB stood for, so you answered that. <laughs> um, so yeah, so three years yesterday. That is that is very cool. Um, yep. do, now is it just like who who's on the like the official team? Is it just you and Josh still, or have you added other members to like be an actual part of the team that you you know as far as um, or do you just bring people along with with you guys or who's all on it? <laughs> So when we first started out, we we had quite a few people. We had you know, a couple of people that went with us to Brushy Mountain, and you know we had a few other friends that that we added in. And before the first official investigation, it was a bunch of behind the scenes stuff that was going on, and none of them was really wanting to participate. So me and Josh came to the decision we're just going to kick them all out. Mm-hmm. And so, and this was about the time my now wife had joined the team. So for the longest time, it was four of us. Okay. So it was me and him and his now ex-wife and my current wife. You know, So for the biggest portion, it was only four of us. And then, then throughout the last couple of years, we've added some members. So right now we're, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think we're back up to about eight. So it's me and my wife, uh, our, my wife's oldest son. He's um, almost 16. He's part of the team and goes when he can go. Um, of course, Josh and his now girlfriend is on part of the team. One and one of mine and Josh's longtime friends from elementary school is part of the team. Um, and then another one of our good friends, he's a part of it. So like I said, it's about seven or eight of us right now. So, 
That is awesome. So you've got so the sixteen year old. So um, did he like as as growing up? Did did he always like this type of stuff, or or just as he's met you? And is is it something kind of new to him? Or I'm just wondering since he's the young, the young one. He uh, he you know had experiences growing up too, oh. and you know my my wife you know his mom was always into the paranormal too. She had a bunch of experiences growing up and stuff, and she was always interested in it. And that was kind of one of the things that kind of drew us together whenever we first met. That was like our big common interest was the paranormal. And uh, when he was younger, you know, me and my wife's been together, well, almost three years now. Um, so he was 13 when we got together, and he was like, oh, man, I, I want to go to a place with you guys. And I'm like, well, I was like, dude, I was like, a lot of these places you have to be 18. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of us, you know, insurance purposes, you know, they usually don't let minors in. I was like, but as soon as I found a place that, you know, allows younger people to come in, I was like, I'll take you along. And I eventually came across a place. Um, they were doing a public event, a um, place called Rosemont in Gallatin, Tennessee, and they were doing an all-ages event. And so I took him to it, and he absolutely loved it. And he's been on, I think, three other investigations with us. Like I said, he don't get to go that often, but, uh, but whenever we can take him, we take him with us. Sure. Yeah, I was say because he'd be maybe a sophomore or a junior in high school. Yeah, he'll be a junior. Junior, yeah. Uh, hmm. Man, see, it, I would have loved it to be able to do that back yeah, in 16 years definitely. old. Definitely. <laughs> you know, I like that stuff when it, since I was a kid. But, but it, it's it's funny how, like, uh, I know that it, it happened with us when we first went to our first locations and stuff. It If you're into it, it just, like, it grabs you. It's it's like a, a drug. <laughs> you just want to keep going to it's these addictive. investigations. Mm-hmm. Appropriately or inappropriately, yeah. it grabs you. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's true. It's like um, it's like the game. I was telling somebody it's like the game of golf. Like either you're into it or you're not. But it's like uh, when my dad and I would play. It's that um, you know that like you'd be playing horrible. And then that one good shot, whether it was a putt or a drive, it brings you back. Well, mm-hmm. in a different roundabout way. Like yeah, the uh, the paranormal you. You might not have anything, but it's just that uh, potential. You're at a creepy place. It's usually historical, and uh, it's just that that adrenaline. It does. It does. Yeah. It's like it, it just. And if you have something even minor, it, bring, it just keeps bringing you back. And it is. It, it gets addictive because, um, yeah. I wish we. I, you know, we we got obviously a late start, uh, and uh, I'm in my fifties. We're these, on the wrong side the, of forty as these well. These youngsters yeah. are in the forties, <laughs> but. Man, I would have loved to have started, yeah, as a kid, but, you know. Damien, we've talked about how some people play cards, some people golf, some people go out for beers, although, we, I mean, we could still do all that stuff. But we do, that's what we enjoy doing is going to do investigations. We don't get to do it as often as we like, but uh, it yeah. is, it's a blast. Mm-hmm. It is, it is. But like Nate said, it is. It's addictive. And, um, you know, we, we've been to, I think, four, three or four or five places and, uh, you know, in the last couple of years. So we're, we're kind of getting there. But um, how, how many... Uh, do you try to do as far as say like on a monthly basis, how many investigations do you try to schedule? Um, but we try to keep it to at least once a month. Um, sometimes maybe, maybe once every couple of months, but, um, and the three years since we started, we've got probably roughly about 30 investigations under our belt. Oh, wow. That's a lot. Wow. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah. For not, you know, for just doing it for three, I mean, really three years is a long time, but it's not that long. Um, it's, yeah, that's a lot of places. What, um, I want to ask you too before we start kind of getting into the investigations and some of your stories. Um, do you guys like uh, as far as equipment and what is your style of investigating? Uh, tell us, you know, kind of what you use if you use anything. Uh, anybody on your team, like you know, is somebody designated to be the video person and the audio, or uh, how does all that any work? Empaths, you know. Yeah, yeah, right. Do you have any empaths or people that kind of? lean on that side of things as far as uh, being, you know, um, sensing what's going on? Um, well, well, first off, we're, we're a very respectful team. We're not one of these teams that go in and, and provoke and, 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 and cuss the spirits out and stuff like that. You know, we go in treating them like they're still alive and like they're right there in front of us. Um, Speaking you know, our language. Their, their <laughs> location there's been one location that the people told us, you know, this is the only way you can get them to interact with you is if you're kind of a jerk going. Mm-hmm. And so that's the one and only time we actually kind of provoked. And it, it, it worked. I mean, we got we had stuff happening. But other than that, you know, we're always going in respectful and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> as far as the equipment, I mean, we try to keep it as basic as possible. You know, camcorders, um, digital recorders, EMF detectors, um, 
They have a REM pod. That's probably my favorite piece, um, other than like a digital recorder because you can get interaction with it. Um, we have an SLS, even though it kind of gets a bad rap and, you know, it does give off a lot of false positives, but we have captured some stuff that, you know, kind of left us scratching our heads. Um, my wife, she's kind of a, a sensitive. She's been told she's um, a little bit of clairvoyant, a little bit of a medium. So mm. she can kind of send some stuff even before we get to a location. She's like, you know, I think it's going to be a, an act of night or she can feel like somebody standing right beside her that, of course, none of us can see or, or sense. But she's like, there's somebody right beside me. And, and Josh, kind of that way, too, he kind of taps into that stuff when we're in the uh, location. So we kind of have a couple uh, of sensitives on the team, too, so. Um, coming off of the, what you were saying about your wife, is that something that she's recently discovered about herself or is that something that she can go, Oh, you know what? It's happened since I was a little kid or whatever. It, she did say it's stuff that's kind of happened throughout her life, but she never really, really even really much thought about it. And really me and her started dating. And then, you know, she kind of started more or less kind of accepting it, I guess you could say, and kind of getting more comfortable with it. And, and now, you know, it's like an everyday thing with her, you know. Hmm. It, it'll just be like, oh, I think there's somebody standing here with me, and about that time something might happen, or, you know, I'll get the cold chills or you know, something. So I'm just like, you know, it, it becomes second nature to her. So I'm sensitive, too. I I wish I was. I'm more of a rock in the middle of the room. <laughs> I wish I was sensitive. Yeah. You're sensitive to temperatures. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, I think that is such an an added aspect to a, an investigative team. You know, I um, like I said, Nate, Sean, and I have only been on a few, and I don't think we've had anybody that's. I mean, we've been with Aaron Egnats. Um, I know she can kind of have a little bit of. Yeah, she has sense. a little feel. But as far yeah, uh, have a mm-hmm. little feel. But I, I think that'd be something other than the equipment. If like I said, if a team uses equipment, some don't. Um, I think that's a, a huge bonus to have somebody like that, and mm-hmm. so. Uh, to have her come along and be able to, to like, like you said, even even uh, have a feeling even before you get to the location, like, hey, I think it's going to be very active, or it kind of gives you a little bit of um, an edge to, uh, how to prepare. It's like a barometer, right? Yeah, right. A spookometer. Right. A spookometer, <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> awesome. Um, and it sounds like you have a lot of equipment. I'm, I'm pretty impressed. <laughs> I'm like, right. that's, and, that's very you know, cool. Well, we all, you know, take more or less, use the equipment. You know, we have at least one camcorder for pretty much everybody on the team have try to have at least one digital recorder with everybody. Um, so that way we're always documenting, um, whether it be by video or audio. Um, and we do the SS method a lot too. Um, but we've had quite a bit, quite a bit of success with that too. So, um, I really enjoy doing it. Josh loves doing it. My wife, she's only done it a couple of times. So she's kind of, she, uh, she kind of gets overwhelmed, I think, whenever she does it, because she said, you know, oh, there's so many voices coming through, and, like, I think she's hearing them, not just through the spirit box and stuff, but I think she's, like, hearing them, like, beside her and stuff, too. So she, she gets kind of overwhelmed at times with that. So she's only done it a couple of times. Hmm. Yeah, I was going to say, I was going to ask you about if, if she's being a sensitive and you're doing the Estes method, how yeah, how that was going to be uh, coming through to her. So, yeah, her being overwhelmed, I can, I can understand that, and that'd be a little bit uh, intimidating. And well, yeah. Did you? I, I looked at you earlier, Sean. Did you have a question? Or I did, I think that's interesting. I I did kind of one of the looks of like that's it's that is so interesting to me. I think it's um I think a lot of people have gifts that they don't even ta- you know tap into. So I think it's really cool that um that your wife has that and, and that she can feel that. Um, the other thing is is that it's neat that she's you know, pre-sensing. I, I like that, that she's, you know, already kind of tapping into, uh, for me, I, I love to know about the history of the place and what the feel is like. So, um, I just, I find that fascinating. I really find that interesting. Oh yeah. Do, do you guys, um, I know a lot of investigative teams, uh, have different approaches as far as, uh, especially sensitives. They, some of them, don't want to know anything about the place they're going to. Uh, you know, they'll obviously they'll know the name, but that's about it. They don't want to know the backstory. Uh, and then some people, uh, whether they're sensitive or just, uh, you know, a part of an investigative team, they want to know everything about it, uh, going in. So do you guys have a certain approach or do you just kind of maybe here and there, as far as like what you want to know ahead of time about a certain location? Uh, it, it, 
It honestly just kind of varies from from investigation to investigation. Sometimes we go in completely blind, don't know anything but the name, and then you know when we get there, we're like, "Well, do you want to walk through?" And sometimes we'll tell them yes. Yeah. Sometimes we're like, "No, we just want to see if, if what we can gather, you know, correlates with that with other stuff that's happened here." So it just it just kind of depends. Gotcha. Yeah, because I, you know, hearing a lot of investigations, or I'm sorry, investigative uh, teams on different shows, you know, I know uh, some have said. Oh, say like the lead investigator want he that he or she wants to know, uh, but if they bring in a, a sensitive, uh, a lot of them say nope, don't don't tell me anything. You guys can know about it, but I don't want to uh, have right. a heads up because they want to go in fresh, uh, have you know zero uh, knowledge of what's gone on and what the history is all about, uh, what good or bad or all of it. So um, yeah, I was just curious to see like what what your approach was. Um, oh, go ahead. Have you go ahead. ever had uh, an investigation where you guys had to leave? Is just is too much? No, there, there's never been one where we had to leave. There's been a couple after we were done. We were just like, you know, what what was really going on here? Um, like there was one location we went to. Um, and it was actually our, our son's second investigation. His first full investigation was just the team and. Uh, of all places, it was an old post office, but we didn't really think much of it. We just like, oh, cool, an old post office. And during our walkthrough, um, actually our son and one of our other investigators both got scratched on the neck. Mm. And then there at the end of the night, I was locked inside a vault in the complete darkness by myself, and I came out with three scratches on the back of my neck. Oh, man. Wow. And, and the people that kind of, like, I guess oversaw the investigations I gave us like our walkthrough and stuff. They're like, you know, that's really weird. That's never happened here. And I'm sitting there thinking to myself, <laughs> huh. if it ever happened, you know, then only one of us is going to get scratched. We're not going to leave with three people leaving with a total of five scratches. You can't say, tell me that's never happened here. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's pretty active. <laughs> yeah. So when they were giving us our walkthrough, um, the guy was, was was telling most everything, and there would be certain times he would go to say something, and his wife would look over at him, kind of shake her head or clear her throat, like telling him, "Don't don't tell him that." Ah, so we, interesting. They weren't allowed to tell us certain things, so like the owners didn't want people to know, or if like they just didn't want to tell us. But well, as soon as they said it's free, we all were like in agreement, like they're they're hiding something, and. It was it was a really weird place. So that t- to me that's weird, and the reason I say that is if you've got a place that you're letting investigators come through to check out, or if you've got a place that yeah you do you know even like tours, that's kind of part of it. Like to hide certain things or not let people know. You know, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, we've got activity. This is uh, It goes to whatever, 18, this and that, and this could happen, that could happen, but then you leave out some other thing. You might as well just let it all out and just give people a heads right. up. Or if, you know, if you haven't had anything, but somebody says, oh, my gosh, I got scratched, I've got three scratches, don't go, oh, well, I, I was never, ha-, you know, like, just say, oh, wow, my be gosh. Yeah, yeah right? be transparent. Just be genuine and honest, and, and I, I don't get that. I, I mean, you, you're, you already have people coming in to check it out, and it's already got something, so why not just go with it, whatever it is, good, bad, and I don't I don't understand that, why they would do that. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense to me either. Did, did the scratches happen in real, I mean, like, as far as when you realized it, was it real time, or did you just at some point go, oh, my gosh, I've got scratches? You know what I mean? Because some people feel it at, when it happens, or they realize it later on when it kind of, you know, settles, and it, you know, maybe it's kind of raised, and, you know, uh, I was just curious how, when did you realize you got scratched? Well, the the first guy, our teammate Mark, um, like I said, it was during our walkthrough. He just kind of out of this random. He's like, "Man, my neck was like it's burning." Mm. I was like, "Well, let me look." And I pulled out my phone and turned on my flashlight, and there was a scratch like all the way down the side of his neck. I was like, "Man, he got a big scratch on your neck." I was like, "Did you scratch yourself?" He's like, "No." He's like, "My hands have been in my pocket the whole time." I was like, "Well, that's weird." And probably ten minutes later. Um, our son was like, yeah, he's like, my neck's kind of burning too. And then Mark checked his neck and he's seen the scratch like forming on his neck. Wow. And like I said, when I, when it happened to me, like I said, I was locked inside this wall and I was doing the Essence method. Um, and it, it felt like my neck was burning and it started kind of hurting. And then when it started hurting and stuff, I was like, all right, I'm done. And 
whenever they let me out, I told them what was going on with my neck, and they pulled their phone up and turned the light on. There was three little tiny scratches on the back of my neck. And then, you know, we had what well, we had. I don't have the video anymore because I lost a lot of my stuff um, with my top crash. But um, there was like a 15-minute video of me in there, and I never once touched my neck. And I walked out with three scratches on the back of my neck. That's crazy. That is crazy. Man. Yeah, we haven't had anything like that. Yeah, I know Nate that's intense. has been <laughs> – uh, uh, Bobby Mackey. Yeah, I keep, I, I, every time I ask, I I keep forgetting where you've been. Yeah, as Bobby Mackey's, I was standing just outside the Was it the basement. So yeah, the basement, uh, so-called jail cell type thing, and yeah, I, something pinched the back of my leg. But yeah, I don't think any of us, other than you know that, I I haven't felt anything touch me or try to scratch me, and I don't think either. Sean. No, but you guys try to blame me for doing it. That's right, <laughs> Sean's. The, yeah, if, <laughs> I'm more of the tickler, but so, you know. yeah, right. <laughs> um, so let's let's get into some of the other investigations and some you know tell tell our uh, listeners some of the places you guys have been and and uh, any you know certain stories from them would be great. Well, we've uh, we've been fortunate enough, I guess you could call it fortunate enough. To, um, like I said, we've done roughly about 30 investigations, and we've only had maybe three or four dead nights where, like, we didn't have nothing happening, didn't capture nothing on video, nothing on audio, which is completely dead. Um, so we've gotten lucky pretty much everywhere we've gotten, whether we've just got audio or if we've captured video, or if it was just those personal experiences that we didn't capture, you know, we've had those experiences pretty much everywhere we went. Um, other than that post office, um some of our most active places have been um, Octagon Hall in Franklin, Kentucky, um, Hotel Metropolitan in Paducah, Kentucky. It was a pretty active place. Um, our most active location um, has been the historic Scott County Jail in Huntsville, Tennessee. Um, and at that place, um, we we actually captured our most profound piece of evidence so far to date. And uh, that night, it was just me and Josh and um of course, they had you know one of the the ladies who oversee everything. She she stayed on site because insurance purposes, all that fun stuff. So she was downstairs the entire night in her office. She's an investigator too, so she was editing video. Had noise canceling headphones on all night. Didn't didn't know anything that was going on. And so you know we're going through this jail and and we're having stuff happen in pretty much every room we walk into. Wow! But always what happened right when we'd walk in before we start recording or. So it happened right when we we're walking out after we've done stop recording because we're switching locations. So it was kind of toying with us like all night long. Hmm. And to, to end the night, we decided, you know, we, we've hit every area up. It's like, let's, let's finish the night on the second floor in the kitchen. And <clears throat> we're in the kitchen. We have the door closed. And Josh is saying some stuff like, you know, you, you guys have been doing this stuff all night long. You've been kind of messing with us, but we want you to show us that you're really here. Show, really show us something. And about that time, you know, like our REM part starts going off. We have an ED, uh, EDI box that starts kind of fluctuating and kind of going nuts. And about that time, we both hear what sounds like a female from the hallway saying, help. Like it was loud enough that we both heard it, heard it over the devices beeping. And, you know, I pick up my camera, I walk over to the door and I open the door and I'm like, Hello? And about that time, there's a picture on the wall that comes flying off the wall and does a flip in midair and lands about four feet away. Hmm. And of course, it scares me, and I'm you know dropping some choice language because it's <laughs> you know, and and when we finally calm down, we review it like right then to, to see if we even captured it because I was I wasn't looking at my camera when I walked out; I was looking out in the hallway. So. I didn't know if my camera was even on, if it was pointing at the ground, where it was pointing at. And, and sure enough, you know, we captured the entire thing. And, uh, you know, we went downstairs and got Miranda, brought her upstairs. We're like, you know, you got to watch this. And she she couldn't figure it out. We tried to debunk it for about 20 minutes. And that's something we always like to do before we just throw it out there saying it's paranormal. We try to make sure there's no logical explanation that we can come up with before we, we throw it out there and present it to people. And like all three of us tried for 20 minutes, try to debunk it. Her and her, or her partner came in the next morning and tried for an hour to debunk it. I couldn't figure it out. And I'd send her the video. Cause she's like, you know, send me that video. I want to, you know, I want to break it down and look at it closer. And in this video, 
when I walk out into the hall, you can see this white anomaly comes down and goes to the right. You see a, a black shadow figure dart across the screen, and then right when that picture goes flying, it looks like a shadow arm comes out from behind the wall and just slaps this picture off the wall. Ooh. All that happened with with the devices going off and the and the woman saying help, and all that happened in about forty five seconds, and we captured every bit of it. That is, yeah. Uh, if you've got that type of reaction, um, and you're able to capture it, that that's awesome. With yeah, with your equipment, you heard it uh, in real time. It's freaking awesome, <laughs> really freaky and awesome. Yeah, were you were you? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I, well, I, first of all, I'll, we respect that you try to debunk things. Uh, maybe come up with alternative reasons of what happened right. or why it happened. You know what caused it. Uh, a lot of them don't. Uh, you know, and I, I mean, I'm not going to dog any investigation or investigative team for not doing that. But I think that is going, um, you know, the extra mile just to say, hey, before we're going to to say this is what it is uh, or put it out there, um, I, th I think that's uh, a legitimate way to do things as far as investigating and is, is to just to see, okay, could it be this? Could it be that? Not, you know, maybe it's not the paranormal or the supernatural causing it. Um, but, uh, but, uh, but, after, but other than that, like, were you, I don't know if I would be scared. I don't know. I think I'd be either all in all. I think I'd be terrified. You think you'd be, Sean <laughs> oh, would be terrified. I, I, don't. I, I don't know. I, because that's kind of like what you want, you know, but then again, be careful what you ask for. I don't know. I don't know. First, when it actually happened, it, it, it scared the crap out of me. But after I yeah. backed up and we took the camera off, we were both had so much adrenaline and were so hyped up. Mm. Like the flipper was done like out the door. Like we were super excited. We're like, you know, we've been doing this for over a year. We haven't really captured anything good. Did we just capture something? Did we just really experience this? And and what makes this even a little bit more interesting is earlier in the night, that same picture had fallen off the wall. We were in the room next to the kitchen, and we captured audio of it falling, but we didn't actually see it happen. And so when we heard it fall, we walked out there, and we're like, oh, that's weird. This picture fell off the wall. And, you know, went downstairs, got Miranda. We're like, hey, is this picture ever fallen? She's like, no, it's you know, never fallen since we hung it up. And at this time... This location had only been up maybe a month. It had only been open to the public for about a month. And they had all these pictures hanging up throughout the jail um, with, like, these, um, like, industrial strings, like Velcro strips. Because it was on it's all that's built out of concrete box and everything. So they didn't want to drill into the walls and stuff like that. So they had them hanging up. You know, they had four or five strips on, on each picture. And it took some, some effort to get it off the wall because when it fell that first time, we hung it back up and tried to pull it off, and it took a little bit of effort to pull it off. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we you know we, we pulled it off and, and tried to get it to land where it did, and every time we would let it go, it would just fall straight down. And we just kind of chalked it up to, you know, maybe somebody was here during the day because they, like, allow, like, stuff. I was like, maybe somebody was here during the day. They were messing with the pitcher. Maybe it wasn't fully stuck on the wall and it just slowly fell off. So we just kind of tossed that out. Right. But then when we actually witnessed it happen, you know, and it flies through the air and does a flip and lands four and a half feet away. Then, well, then we got to thinking after the fact, well, maybe that's what happened the first time. Cause it was when it fell off the first time, it was probably about a, probably landed about three feet from, from where it was hanging on the wall. And, and so it was just one of those things that, you know, it, it was crazy when we heard it. When we actually seen it happen, it, it just blew our minds. Well, the flip is, that kind of sells it for me. <laughs> it's it's not, a picture's just not going to do a flip. I mean, it can fall off the wall. It can even, you know, and it's going to bounce or do whatever. But if it flips, that's, I think that's something that you can't explain. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, what other uh, places have you been? And, and uh, give give us some more good stories. Another good place we went to, um, we went up to the Hotel Metropolitan in Paducah, Kentucky. Um, it's kind of like a little bed and breakfast type thing, but it's also like a like a living history museum. It's um, it was built back in 1909 by an African American lady, um, and she built it simply for African American people because you know back then everything was segregated. Mm -hmm. You know, whites couldn't stay where blacks were, blacks couldn't stay where whites were, so she built it specifically for you know black travelers and stuff. And, you know, word got out about this, you know, 
great new hotel that just opened up, and it's really not a hotel. It's more of a, a small house. I think it has like six or seven bedrooms upstairs, so it's more of like a bed and breakfast, really. But back then, it was probably a, a magnificent hotel. Like I said, word got out, and all these different um, entertainers started staying there. You know, B.B. King stayed there. Ray Charles stayed there. Uh, Tina Turner stayed there. Um, some of the Harlem Globetrotters. Just all these well-known people from back in the day would, would stay there. And so me and my wife decided to go up a day early before the investigation because we just kind of wanted to night ourselves. And we get there, the owner, the surround kind of tells us some of the history, tells us some of the spooky stuff. And she gives us the key and she lets us, she leaves us there. And we're like, okay, cool. And, you know, the bed and breakfast, we figured somebody would at least stay on the property or something, but you know, nobody stayed. And while the owner was giving us her walkthrough, we walked into the kitchen and right when we got into the kitchen, there was this door on the side that popped open. It was a, a bathroom door. And she was like, oh, that, that happens all the time. She goes, that's why I don't like being in here at night because all this stuff happens. I just don't like being in here by, you know, at nighttime. And so when she left, me and my wife immediately went to that door, tried to figure out why it opened. You know, maybe it was partially closed. Maybe vibration caused it open. We couldn't get it to open. You know, we kind of banged on the wall, jumped up and down in front of it. We couldn't get it to open. So fast forward to the next night, we have now, he's now a former team member, but he, he came up and, you know, he investigated with us. It was just us to be there all night long. And at one point during, we were kind of taking a break. He, he was walking into the kitchen to get something to drink and we heard him scream and we came, you know, took off running. What, what just happened? He's like, man, that door just opened. That same door had opened on him, like right when he walked past it. And probably about an hour later, um, he's back in there getting him something to drink. Me and my wife's in the in the room um, trying to, I think we were using an EMF detector or something, just trying to see if we could get any spikes. And we, we hear him asking for the door to open. And... After he asked, he, he screams out again, and it opened like when he asked it to open. Oh, really? Yeah, and so we spent, after that, we probably spent 25 minutes, and it's on our video on our YouTube page. The last 20 minutes of this video is just us videoing this door trying to get it to open. <laughs> and so, of course, we weren't able to capture it, but that was a personal experience for him. But I think this location, we captured probably our most, probably it's not... Probably it's the, the clearest EVP we've ever caught. It was captured at this location, and it's actually captured on our camcorder. We didn't even—I don't even think it had a re recorder going. But we was upstairs. Um, I was in the middle of the hallway. I was set up doing the SS method. My wife and Ted were probably about 15 feet behind me, asking all the questions and stuff. And at one point, I feel something kind of like poking me on the arm. And I, and I call out, I say, hey, something's touching my arm. And about 30 seconds later, it kind of starts rubbing me on the arm. And I say, hey, it's touching me again. And that, that my whole arm, my whole left arm gets freezing cold. And in the video, probably about a minute after that, you can hear Ted say, are you Pop? And then you hear my wife kind of whisper, who's Pop? And then right at the camera, it comes through and says, that's not my name. And it was clear as day. Like there was no static in it. There was no, is this what it said? Is that, it was clear as day. That's not my name. And I was upset at myself after the fact because when I was reviewing everything, I forgot to turn the night vision on. So all you see in this video is the red glowing exit sign. So I was beating myself up because I was like, man, who knows what we might have seen, mm -hmm. you know, especially coming out of that room that was touching me if I would have had the night vision on, but we captured that EVP. So that, that kind of made up for it, but it was, that was a super clear EVP. Wow. Did you, did, um, as far as your wife being the sensitive, did she, uh, have any information to give about it? Or was that something that, you know, I don't know. If, I don't know when you guys go places, if she has, you know, it just depends on the place probably, but did she have anything to add to it? Like, yep, this, this is the person or, or this is who it is or what it is. Any, anything like that? Um, that you can remember? She didn't really pick up on anything during the investigation the night before. You know, me and her, we got to whatever room we stayed in, and I slept all night long. I didn't even think I woke up. 
Well, we started um, with the door closed, and it just kept getting warm in there, and she kept making me get up and open the door more and more, and finally the door was wide open. And like I said, I slept all night, and she was telling me about it the next morning. She goes, she goes there was multiple times throughout the night. She goes, I'll look over at the door, and it, it, it just seemed like there was somebody there staring at us. Ooh. This is like not like in a bad way, like creeping on us or anything. Just people there, just kind of checking us out. It's like who are these people in our room, you know? And she said, she goes, I felt that several times throughout the night. She goes, I was waiting to look over and actually see somebody standing there. She wow. goes, but I never did. She goes, I just I sensed that almost the entire night. Like a watcher. Yeah. Hmm. Like I said, this place was, you know, built for African Americans, and here these two, you know, white people sleeping in there. They're they're probably. <laughs> To people in our in our building, you know, and and that it was just and and we had our probably our, our best SLS capture at this location too. And like I said, the SLS gets a, a bad rap because it gives off a lot of false positives. But this night, when we started our investigation, it was dead for probably the first forty five minutes to an hour. Like nothing was happening. And I'm like, man, let's just play some music. Let's play some music on the people who stayed here, see if I don't stir up anything. And I turned on a BB King song, and my wife has the SLS um, focused in the dining room, and this song comes on, and these two figures map in. It's a tall one and like a short one, like it's a like a, a man and a child standing there, and they both look like they're dancing to the music. And I was like, that's and that's strange. I was like, let's see what happens when we turn the music off. Shut the music off. They both disappear, like right when the music stops. I'm like, okay, that's cool. I was like, let's play another song. Let's play a little bit more upbeat song. I think we turned on like a Ray Charles or a Little Richard or something. And as soon as the music comes on, they both pop back up. Tall one, short one. Both looks like they're dancing to music. The looks like the little kids is kind of breaking it down. It looks like the man, the taller one, is like tapping his foot to the music. So when it shuts off, they both disappear. And I was like, I was like, surely it's got to be something over there. It, it's thinking it is, is a person. And it was where we had it facing. It was just an empty doorway. Hmm. And like I said, they both mapped in both times when music came on, both disappeared when the music turned off. Right. Isn't that wild? That's just like residual. It, 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 it's so interesting to think about what's going on there. You know, is it something energy that's stuck, or you know, something, or a, a happy period, or a happy time? You know, for for that energy the, or the ghost. I mean, it's just, you know, I I want to know what's going on there. I think that's that's so interesting. Well, I think it might be. Uh, it sounds intelligent, not residual. Yeah, because it's reacting to the. Well, that's a good point. Yeah, reacting to the music, right? Where it's, it's. Uh, intelligent to know oh they're playing music they're playing and music and they're react yeah and if they're doing yeah. yeah like a dance uh d- is that something you they kind of told you to do or was that just an idea you're like hey i wonder if music would stir up some just stuff. like i said nothing was happening you know we weren't hearing any knocks we weren't hearing no floorboards creaking no whispers like nothing was happening and i was just like let's let's try some music let's see what happens yeah. and once we started playing that music, that kicked up the night. It was it was full on active the rest of the night. Man, yeah, intelligent makes sense. And yeah, yeah. yeah. I, it was just an idea. I was thinking, well, gosh, you know, didn't do anything until you started playing music. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. Well, uh, we found out the next morning. Um, you know, the owner came back the next morning, and we were kind of telling her some stuff that went on, and we told her about the door in the kitchen again. And she goes, she goes, the only thing I can think of maybe in this kitchen. She goes. She goes, years ago, she goes, um, a man murdered his brother in this kitchen. Oh, nice. I'm like, oh, I was like, well, that kind of would have been nice to know ahead of time. <laughs> so, so, you know, maybe try to figure out if that's who's been just opening this door every every five seconds, you know. But mm-hmm. And and she told us we could, we, we were welcome back anytime. So, you know, that's definitely a place we, we plan on going back to at some point. I bet. Uh, tell us the name of, uh, of it again, please. The... It's called the Hotel Metropolitan. And that's in, uh, where is it at again? Oh, gosh, I can't remember. Uh, Paducah? Paducah, Kentucky, yep. Yeah. Check that out. Um, I just lost my train of thought. Oh, um, real quick, before we get into more stories, tell, so remind us, uh, 
what the SLS camera is that the one that is it shows like the heat or is it the like the stick figures? Is that is that is it one of the two or is it something totally different? It, it, it maps in the little stick figures. Yes, yeah. Okay, I I, I knew it was, had to be one of the two. Um, okay, yeah, I, I had written my notes. I'm like, it's either the heat uh, or the or the stick figures. Yeah, I I think not too long ago we had somebody on our mm-hmm. show and they were saying the same thing about the. We've watched some of those videos too. And yeah, some of the places we've been, that we've looked at and thought, man, it just it is. That's very creepy. I think that's consistent though with the um, SLS where, eh, you know, it, it, you take. I don't know. It's it's not the most uh, accurate. So your your opinion on it, uh, we've we've heard before, yeah. And and in watching videos and all that uh, of different investigations, I think everybody kind of has that idea of what you know. You kind of take it for you know. You might you want you might want to use it, but don't really buy into it fully. Um, what what other places have you been to? I want to know about Brushy. Brushy, oh man, um, like I said, that that's but that that location is what eventually just set us off down this path. Um just during our walkthrough. So like I said, we didn't really know much about investigating then other than what we would kinda do as teenagers and what we seen on T V. So we didn't really know what we were doing. So, you know, we're giving us our walkthrough and stuff and the tour are in front of us and there's absolutely nobody behind us and you know, we're hearing people talking behind us, and we're all turning around, and they're like, yeah, that happens a lot. You know, you hear people talking. There's nobody there. Um, so we witnessed, you know, we, we had that happen just during our walkthrough, and we started out, it was six of us. It was three guys, three girls. We all started out together, and we eventually just eventually just drifted apart. The guys went in one direction, the girls went in another, and we were – they had one um, cell kind of set up. They had like a, a table and chair, and they had a checkered board in there. And I was like, "Hey, let's uh, you know, let's move some of these checkers around, and then come back in a little bit and see if they've been moved back." And you know, we moved some of them around, took a picture of it, you know, to document that we moved them. And we came back probably about forty-five minutes later, and those pieces were back where they were originally were. And I was like, "Well, that's weird." I was like, "I was like, surely the girls had come up here, and you know, put them back." Eventually, we met up with them, and I was like, hey, have y'all been up in these cells that has the checkerboard? And they're like, no, like, no we've been down in this area this whole time. We're like, y'all didn't go up there and mess with the checkerboard. They're like, no, I swear we you know, we didn't mess with it. And so were they messing with us? I don't know, but, you know, we we know that we moved them, and when we came back, they they were moved back, back on the board. We moved them, we moved them off the board, and... So that was a little, it's one of those things we weren't really sure about, but it was, if it actually happened, it was really cool. Sure, um, yeah. At one point, me and Josh kind of separated from the group, and we were out, and I think it was the, the D-block, D-block sale. Um, and we did have some dowsing rods. The tour guides let us use some dowsing rods. We never even heard of dowsing rods until that night. And uh, Josh has a lot, of, uh, a lot of luck with them, but he's using these dowsing rods. And every time I'd ask a question, it would like they would turn one way, and then they would I would point, pretty much point wherever I was standing at. Hmm. And he eventually asked, he goes, he goes, do you just not like Damien? And right after he asked that question, it sounds like something was thrown at us because we hear something like a little, sounds like a little rock just crashed behind us. Oh man! And I, actually, I did capture that on audio. I think that was the only thing I captured on audio. Um, then, kind of the end of the night. Like I said, Josh is still using the dowsing rods, and it's he's just asking all these different yes to no questions. You know, yes, if it's yes, you know, open the rods. If it's no, cross them. And, and we're just kind of walking through the courtyard, and every time he asks a question, like I just seem to get more and more angry, and I have no idea why I'm getting mad. And we eventually make our way into the gymnasium, and same thing. I'm just every time he asks a question, I'm just getting like super mad. And he finally asked another question, and I finally and I throw my hands up, and I'm like, "Screw this, I'm done!" And I storm across the courtyard, like mad as a hornet, just storm off, get past the rest of my, our crew, get about five feet away from them, and that anger turns to sadness, and I literally I break down and I'm crying tears. And Josh was like, "Man, what's going on?" I was like, "I have no idea." I was like, "I, I don't know what happened." 
and about 30 seconds of crying, it lifted and I was perfectly fine. And I was using, you know, the recorder this entire time. And so a couple of days later, I'm listening to everything and started kind of making sense why I was getting these, these emotion, these emotions coming through. It seemed like he was interacting with this black guy who was in prison simply because of the color of his skin. Mm -hmm. He didn't, whatever crime he was put in there for, like he was completely innocent. And so I was feeling his anger for being put in there. And then I eventually felt his sadness because he eventually passed away there, spent his whole life there all because of the color of his skin. And that's what I could kind of gather from the questions he was asking, the answers he was receiving, and what I was feeling. And I'd never been affected with anything like that before, and I hadn't been affected since up until, I think, January of this year when we was at a location. But it was it was wild. Well, I was going to ask you, had you not had that type of uh, occurrence before as far as getting that emotional or whether you were angry or sad? Yeah, that's not not typical, right, is what you're saying? No. The Gosh. first time that ever happened was there, and like I said, it didn't happen again for Two and a half years. Wow. It happened back in January at a location we were at. I didn't feel the anger, but I felt this is sudden sadness and just started bawling and mm. didn't want to leave the room I was in. Like I had to be, Josh more or less had to pick me up and pull me out of the room because I did not want to leave the room. Man. Wow. It's yeah. Like something gra- getting a hold of you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah speaking through you or, or, yeah. or putting its emotion, his emotion on you. I didn't mean to say it, uh, his emotion on you and, that is uh that would be a little overwhelming i think uh a little scary too just even not like like not a scared like oh my gosh you're frightened but just like you said you're like like josh is going what what's wrong dude <laughs> why why are you acting like this and you're like i have no idea that would be a little little bit uh, unnerving I it's think. overwhelming i would especially say when too, you yeah. don't usually react that way mm-hmm. when you go to locations and all of a sudden you're like ticked off one minute and then the next you're sad that's that's kind of that's a lot <laughs> become like a conduit too you know we've talked about that for people like having those responses to the spiritual energy so yeah i've I've never had that before either so i think that that would be interesting just think if you're by yourself and you're experiencing that at least you had your your friend to kind of grab you and yeah kind of check on yeah yeah, pull you out of it exactly and then like what what's going on you know uh, help you through it instead of just you know because you know, our friend Erin, she goes on uh, a lot of investigations by herself to these places. And we're like, how do you do that? You know, like, and she she goes to a lot of intense places, you know. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I, yeah, I'm just glad you had your, your buddy with you. Yeah, it's definitely intense. No doubt. Um, Sean, you got, I know you've got something you I want wanted to, to know about. Did you, you captured a lady in white? Didn't you have a full body apparition that I, I'd heard about? I decided not to capture anything. This was years ago before I ever had a team. This house we lived in, um, this was after my first marriage ended. I ended up moving back in with my mom for a little bit. And um, we all lived in this house. It was, you know, my, my mom, my stepdad, myself, my, my two younger stepbrothers, my sister, her husband, their kids. There was like nine or ten of us living in this house, right? And, like, just all this crazy stuff would, would go on there. Like, nothing to the point where, like, oh, my God, we got to move. But just stuff that would leave you kind of scratching your head and trying to figure out what it was. And like I said, this was before I ever had my team and all this other stuff. But there was one night, uh, we always, when we went to leave, we'd always go through the basement door because the basement led right to the driveway. So we always just left through the basement. So I'm going to leave one night. It's like 930 at night. And I go to walk out the door, and I just happen to look up, and I see this woman out in the yard just standing there and you know she's like i don't know if she was just in a nightgown or if she was in a dress but it was she was in all white and she had like long white hair and i'm like I'm like who is that and you know i sat there and, and probably stare at her for probably a good 10 or 15 seconds just trying to figure out who's in our yard and from a in the split second that the screen door passes my eyes when i'm opening the screen door she's gone I'm like, what in the world? And the way this house is set up, there's from the driveway, there's some stairs that go up the little small hill to our front, to the front yard and leads around to the to the front door. My two brothers was out there sitting on the steps. And I was like, hey, man, I was like, who, who was just in the yard? I was like, was Brittany just out here, my sister? 
They're like, no, there's nobody out here. We've been sitting out here for about 45 minutes. It's only been us. I was like, man, I was like, I know. I've just seen this woman in, in the yard. And they're like, man, there's nobody out here. And they're like, where was she at? And I was like, he was over by the, the, the black tree. There was a tree in the yard that was a big chunk of it, a big portion of it was charred. Like, I don't know if it was struck by lightning or if somebody set fire to it or what, but it was a big, big chunk part of it that was charred black. I was like, man, she was over by the black tree. And they're like, huh, man, we haven't seen nobody out here. And so a couple nights later, um, walking out the same door, I'm walking the girl that I was dating at the time. I was walking her out to her car, and she just stops before she ever opens the door. I'm like, what are you doing? She's not saying nothing. I'm like, hey, I'm like, what, what's going on? And she finally kind of snaps out. I was like, what's, what are you doing? She's like, there's a woman in the yard. I was like, what do you mean? She goes, there is a woman in your yard right now. I'm like, well, what does she, you know, what does she look like? And she just, she described the exact same thing, standing in the exact same location. And I hadn't told her about it because I didn't want her to freak out and not come back over. And I was like, you know, and I didn't want to tell you this, but I'd seen the exact same thing you're describing two nights ago. And her eyes got real big. And she's like, are you kidding? I was like, no. I was like, I, I, was like, I asked, you know, Peyton and Preston, they were out here. And of course, she ran to her car, and I don't think she ever came back at night after that. But yeah, it was wow. that place was wild. Yeah, I don't blame her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess I don't. <laughs> I think it'd be interesting to come oh, back. Yeah, that that'd be cool. Do you, Do you have any idea who it could be? Like, I mean, like, what did you kind of delve into the history of the house or the location and say, oh, it could be this? Or did you ask like any neighbors if they've seen anything? Um, there wasn't really any neighbors. Like the closest neighbors was probably you no know, half a mile down the road. Oh, gotcha. Um, but like I said, back then I didn't really know much about research in places like this because mm-hmm. I didn't really know that was a, I mean, I knew about research, but I didn't know how to go about research in places like that. So I just kind of chalked it up. The house was haunted, but we, we do know that there was two headstones in the side yard uh, and you can make out one of the names. It was like clear as day. It was, um, I remember what his name was now, but he was uh, a lieutenant or something. Um, and it said he had died in like the late 1800s. So I'm assuming he was like a, probably a, a Civil War soldier is what I would guess. And th- there was a little smaller headstone beside it that said baby and then like a name underneath that. So we're assuming that was an infant or a child. And what's crazy about that? is, like I said, my sister lived there at the time, too, and so my, my nephew was living there. And at the time, he was about three, three maybe four years old. And there was one night she uh, she would always have to sleep, lay in bed with him until he fell asleep because he was scared to sleep by himself. And so I'm in the living room watching TV, and she's texting me. She goes, Braden's in here talking to the closet door. Like, the closet door is open. She's like, he's in here talking to the closet I was like, he's talking about this? She goes, he's in there just having a full-blown conversation. And she goes, I asked him who he was talking to, and he goes, I'm talking to the man. She goes, what man? She goes, the man, he's in there, he's covered in blood. Oh, wow. Ooh. Well, this kid's three, four years old. He's not going to, like, just randomly think of something like that. Yeah. So a little while later, like a few days later, my sister was telling me, um, her and my mom were sitting at the kitchen table. Now, this is the middle of the day. So my nephew comes walking through, opens the back door, opens the screen door, says, hey, y'all come on in, closes the doors, walks back to the back rooms, comes back out 20 minutes later, opens the doors, and says, I'll see you guys tomorrow. And of course, they ask him, you know, who are you talking to? And he goes, I'm talking to the soldier man and his little boy. Hmm. And I'm like, holy crap. I was like, the, the, there's a soldier and a little boy buried or a little kid buried in the side yard yeah <laughs> bingo <laughs> so that like i said that place is just that's the only people only history i knew about it it was those two people buried there and i tried researching the guy's name and i couldn't ever find anything but back then i wasn't very good at research so damien i have to tell you about the uh, the lady in white or cream that you're talking about my wife my um back in march my my dad passed away in the middle of the month and um, he had end stage Alzheimer's, and my wife and I were before we put him on hospice. We were up at my mom's, is about twenty minutes away from our house, and we were coming back 
um, from their house. And my, my wife was driving. It was in my car. And we were kind of going down country roads, and she and I were talking, and uh, we went around this curve. It was not a real well lit uh, road or, you know, uh, back road. And um, she freaked out because she's like, oh, my gosh, who's who's that walking? And I was like, what are you talking about? I, I don't see anybody. And she's trying to tell me that there was some woman in white or a white dress walking along the road that she almost hit. And I was like, I did not see anything, honey. And I looked back and I was trying, I told her, I'm like, well, let's go back and find her. And she said, like the the hair on the back of her neck was standing up. She's like, I'm not going back. So she's trying to figure out who would be walking. And I was like, honey, you just saw a lady in white. And she goes, actually, it was like a cream color. And so we kind of talked about it a little bit. And it's funny because during that time, you know, with my dad, you know, getting ready to pass and everything, she was talking about how she missed her grandmother who'd been dead for quite a while and I never got to meet her. And she said, um, I always wanted my, my mom or my grandmother to come back to me. And so I got to thinking by the next day, I told her, I said, hey, maybe that was your grandma. You know, how do you know that wasn't your grandma trying to send you a sign that you were just talking about? And she's like, you know, maybe that was my grandma. Well, a couple uh, days later, maybe later in the week, um, her, we sat down and had dinner with her parents, and I was telling this story. I said, "Did you tell your your uh, parents about seeing your grandma?" And they were like, "What's this?" You know. And so we told that whole thing, and then we, she corrected me, saying, "Well, it was like a cream colored dress." And and uh, my my wife's uh, mother said, uh, "Jenna, don't you remember what you buried your we buried your grandmother in? It was a cream nightgown. It was her favorite nightgown." She goes, "That was your grandmother." And it was, she was like, oh, my gosh, we did. Her her grandfather wanted to bury her like a proper dress. And my and my uh, wife at the time said, no, she's going to be comfortable in her uh, cream nightgown. And she and my wife said, I had forgotten it completely about that. She's like, oh, my God, that was grandma. <laughs> so she had this thing. That I didn't see it. I was like, you'd think that we'd see somebody walking along. But it freaked her out. And it just seemed like it was just meant for her, you know. Right. That, that, that's crazy. And. And something else that and may I don't know if it's connected or not to the to the lady in white. The um, very first experience I remember as a young kid, I was probably three years old, and I'd woken up in the middle of the night. I was sleeping on the couch this night for whatever reason, and I remember waking up, and of course it's dark in the living room. You know, maybe some light shining through the window or whatever, but. I wake up and you know, I'm on my back looking at, I wake up at, face up at the ceiling and there's like, but it, I've always described it as like a witch figure floating above me. Like, not like your typical witch with the pointy black hat, but just, that's just what it reminded me of was a witch. And, you know, of course, being three years old, it, it spooked me and I pulled the covers up over my head and when I brought them back down, she was still just kind of floating there. I simply pulled them up again, and when I pulled them down the second time, she had disappeared. And, of course, you know, my parents told me I was just having a bad dream, this or that. And the very first interview I did, you know, after we started our team um, back in, like, January of 2021, I was telling that story about the the woman floating above me, and I was I told her about um, the woman I seen in white. And this uh, one of the hosts, she was like, you know, what if that's the same person? And they're just kind of following you around because at the house that I seen the woman in, there were several times that I heard a female whisper my name in my ear. Like I would be about almost asleep and it would just, I would have like earbuds in and I would hear it over my music. Like somebody was like right in my ear whispering my name and it was that of a female. And she's like, you know, what if the two are connected somehow? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like I never really put two and two together. I was like, well, that is kind of weird to think about. So, I don't know if it's, it's possible for sure. We may never, that I may never know, but it's always it's always stuck with me. And if that was a dream, it was the most vivid dream I've ever had because I've remembered that for thirty eight or thirty five years now. I think so. I think there is something to it. Oh, sorry, that's my phone. <laughs> <laughs> Calendar, ding dong. Yeah, that that's a, I I think I Damien, I think there is something to that. I mean, yeah, you you may, you may never know one hundred percent, but. I mean to to uh, say it, there isn't. Uh, you can't say that. So, might as well say, yeah, it's connected. <laughs> I don't know. You've sold us. <laughs> yeah, you've sold us. I, I I mean, gosh, that's a lot there. That's a great story. Um, what well, real quick? Um, like the lady in white though. Did could you tell? You said white hair. Was it like? Are you saying like white hair? Meaning like a older old lady white hair, or you mean just like a kind of glowy white ghost hair. <laughs> you know, like, I'm just trying to figure out 
maybe was, eight was, or it was white hair. It was like white and stringy, like like she had just got out of the shower and oh. her hair was. White. But I could tell it was a younger woman. Okay. But I really couldn't make out facial features. But I could tell she didn't like have any wrinkles or anything like that. Like if she looked, it, it even felt like a younger woman. Yeah. Right. Hmm. So and, yeah. So, so like, and, okay. Well, I don't know if she was connected to that tree because you know that it looked like that tree had been burnt, and and I just I never could figure it out. And I've always wanted to go back to that house and just knock on the door and just talk to the people that live there now. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, they would probably look at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> yeah, you could try it. I mean, all they could say is, nope. <laughs> no, thank you. But uh, maybe they will. You never know. Some people might be open to that. Yeah. You know, I get it, though. Yeah, you might, you know, you're like, oh, boy, you don't want to have somebody yeah, think you're crazy. But you know why? Who cares? If, they, if you know, may, maybe they do, maybe they don't. So you know, you'll never yeah, know until you try. One way to get validation, right? That's right. That would be interesting right. yeah, to, to know. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen anything? Um we're going to wrap up here in a few minutes. I have one question. I know uh, Sean has one, and then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll finish up. But I want to know, uh, what is your favorite uh, horror movie? What is your favorite scary movie, if you have one? My favorite scary movie, my favorite horror movie of all time is Nightmare on M Street Part 3. Oh, Ooh, that's a good one. Now, what is it about Part 3? Because I haven't really seen any of them. I've seen parts of the first one, but I've not seen anything past that. So what is it about Part 3 that is your that makes it your favorite? You know, I, I really don't know. It was just because I, I loved all of them, with the exception of Part 2. I never really cared much for Part 2. But it was just, that one just always stuck out to me. Like, I, I felt like the story was, a, I guess, a little bit more creepy. Mm-hmm. Because they were like in a, in a in a in a hospital, and I don't know, it just felt more creepy than the other ones. And of course, after the third one, they started getting kind of more funny and more punchlines and stuff. So that one was like the last one. You know, it still had like its little funny lines, but they weren't meant to be funny. Right. After that, they kind of get they started adding like more comedy stuff to it. But you know, that one's always been my favorite. You know, I, I love horror movies. I've got. Jason, Freddy, and Ghostface tattooed on my arm, so I'm nice. always been a big fan. So, mm-hmm. okay, so yeah, I thought uh, three was the Dream, Dream Warriors yeah. one. Yeah. yeah, I was wondering because I love that one because I I love the Dawkins song. Yeah, I love the video. <laughs> I, I'd watch it over and over on MTV's Top Twenty. That was <laughs> the summer yeah. of it. Yeah, like, what is eighty six, eighty seven? Song was actually playing on my playlist on the way home today. Nice, right? That's nice. Cool. Yeah, yeah. I I love I love that. Uh, uh, that as well, and I, I remember that video. Um, and I heard actually, what's funny is I heard the song. I hadn't heard it in thirty some years, and I heard it about well, let's see, it was before vacation. That was two weeks ago. So yeah, probably maybe about a month ago. And I was like, oh my gosh, just take me back to my I think sophomore year in high school. <laughs> so that's a great song. Yeah, um, eighty seven. Eighty seven. Yep, that was my sophomore year. That was, that's right. Uh, very cool. Yeah, I was just curious because I, I and I've heard that about. The fret or the uh, nightmare on Elm Street movies that as they go, the more they or the the ones that they've made the later ones that's been more comedy and a lot of people that like the first two or three, they kind of bail on the on the later ones as far as even mentioning them because they're like well they they turn into comedies not horror movies so I yeah that's what I've heard but I haven't seen them so <laughs> um you real quick you said you had a, what, what tattoos again you said yeah you had a, what characters. Oh, okay. I've got Freddy, I'm sitting, and I've got Ghostface, and I've got my Ghostbuster tattoos as well. Gotcha, gotcha. I've got Michael Myers. He's that's my you know, the original Halloween's my favorite uh, movie, yep. uh, horror movie of all time, and of course Michael's my favorite horror character, and I've got him on my left uh, shoulder. Um, right. I'm working on uh, my tattoo artist that's done all 25 of them. She is so booked up, and I'm like, man, I can't wait till November. So I've been trying to reach out to other tattoo artists, and it's being uh, a little more difficult than I expected. But regardless, whoever does them, I want to get, uh, as far as horror characters, I still want to get, uh, I want to get Pennywise and I want to get, uh, the creeper from Jeepers Creepers. So, no. yeah. So, <laughs> um, I've had people, okay. Next, like, I've, I've went back and forth. Like I want to get Leatherface, but I also want to get Michael Myers. Yeah. I want to get the creeper. Now I keep, I keep telling my wife I'm going to get Annabelle because all the kids are scared of Annabelle. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, those are great movies, by the way. My wife and I love those Annabelle movies, and they are creepy. 
Uh, Sean, go ahead and ask uh, your question. Yeah, I want to know about your podcast. I know it's called Life Beyond Six Feet, and I know you're the um, co-host. Uh, it's been three, I, three. You're in the third season. Yeah, we just just dropped uh, episode one of season three on Sunday. Nice. Um, Congratulations! And I, I never even thought about podcasting, like, and I never even listened to a podcast up until. You know, we were, me and Josh was interviewed for our first one, like I said, back in 2021. And after that podcast, I was like, you know, it'd be something kind of cool to do just to kind of kill some time, like on our days off and stuff, you know. I was like, I don't know what we would do, what we'd talk about, who we'd talk to. I was like, but it's going to be something cool to do. And he's like, yeah, we should do that. And that was kind of it. We just kind of talked about it for a second and that was it. And then, you know, we did our second interview on a podcast about, um, Nine months later, actually, the the very next day after we captured the, the picture flying, flying off the wall. So we had a crazy story to tell. Um, and after that, I was like, man, I was like, I really want to do a podcast. I was like, you know, just interviewing for him was fun. I was like, so actually being the interviewer, I think I was like, oh, that'd be really cool. And I said, we just kept talking about it and talking about it and talking about it. And I told him, I was like, man, if we ever start this, it's like, I have a name and the name came from when we actually first started our team. It was, I had this weird idea that I wanted the team to have like a tagline. And so I had all the team members come up with a tagline and I, I was going to put it out on Facebook and I was going to let people vote on what they liked the best. And life beyond six feet was one of them. You know, that was actually the one that won, but we never used it for anything. But I told Josh, I was like, we have to use this for something at some point. I was like, it just, it's too cool. And I was like, man, I was like, that's a perfect name for the podcast. And got to talking about it again and talked to a, a few different people that host podcasts, seeing kind of how they do theirs. And and uh, the second podcast we did, you know, I reached out to him. Me and him's pretty good friends now. I was like, man, how did you start doing yours? And he's like, man, I used to do it by Zoom. He's like, that was the easiest way I found. And, you know, I've done different stuff now, but that's how I started out. I was like, well, I'll try that. And so I downloaded Zoom on my laptop, you know, signed up for it. And that guy that told me that he was actually my very first guest, like it was a spur of the moment thing. Like I recorded it um, and I put it out like a week later and all I do, I don't edit anything else. So like whatever we talk about, if we get off subject, if there's a blooper, it all stays in. All I do is throw on the music. And like I said, we just um, dropped it. Uh, episode one of season three, you know, I've had on, um, I've had multiple guests on from, from like TV shows and stuff. I have, I've had local investigators on from, you know, here right in middle Tennessee. I've had them, I've had investigators from Michigan, from Florida, from, you know, all over. I've had different podcasters on. I've had, um, I know you guys know her, Kristen, Amanda, the paranormal girl. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, I've had Jordan Klein from Fireside Paranormal Podcast on, um, and they were both on my season two finale. I do like a, on each finale of the seasons, like each last episode of each season, I do like a paranormal round table and I bring on four past guests and I just do like a kind of debate type thing, kind of get everybody's like opinions on these different things. And they were on my, my season two finale and you know, it's been, it's been really fun. So. Well, I just followed today, so I'm excited to listen. I think, it, and I like the way you have an homage. It looks like to Keith as well with the police uh, background. I like that. Yeah, right. Like, yeah. Uh, and because because uh, everybody you know that that knows about the team, they kind of know the backstory of the team. And um, I'd reached out to this guy I've known for a very long time. He used to actually date my ex stepsister, if that makes sense. Um, and he's like a real good artist. And I reached out to him about designing the podcast logo. And he was like, man, he's like, I don't think I can do it justice. He's like, but let me give you somebody who I think could do really good. And I reached out to her and, you know, I kind of gave her some, some info about the team and, and the name of the podcast. And that's what she came up with. And she was like, is that good? And I was like, yeah, that's freaking awesome. <laughs> you know? So yeah, it's funny yeah. how uh, things just sort of happen mm -hmm. in a certain, certain way. And it ends up being perfect. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. And it's awesome looking. It's very cool. I love the yeah you know, the red and the blue lights, and you've got the the uh, image in the middle. Very very. Uh, I don't uh, just yeah colorful but creepy at the same time. 
And now, well, now that we know, <laughs> and your, I followed your, your story, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And knowing why you have that is, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> Very nice uh, of you. Um, yeah, we'll. Uh, I'll definitely check out your podcast. And uh, you know, um, when we drop this episode, uh, Damien, next this because we're a week ahead still, which we're proud of. <laughs> but we're going to drop this. It'll be next Wednesday, and so hopefully, you know, our listeners will latch onto your show and. Uh, yeah, maybe we'll gain some more listeners and and uh, yeah, just keep it going. Um, I'm definitely going to check it out starting uh, tomorrow when I go to work because I I listen to podcasts all day long. Um, I work you know my full time job during the day, throw my AirPods in, and then I own a cleaning business. And so nights and weekends, that's pretty much what I do while I'm working is uh, listen to podcasts. So it's uh, nice to have a new one. And then obviously you know you're a friend of the show now, so we'll always uh, we'll always show support to our our friends. Well, my show too. So. Um, let's, let's do this. Let's wrap it up. But I want, uh, you to tell our listeners how they can follow you, uh, your investigative team, RK, uh, be paranormal. Um, you know, give, give the, your social media platforms and all that, uh, as far as how they can uh, follow you guys. All right. Um, yeah, uh, RKB, um, we're on all social media, um, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. Um, we have a website, rkbparanormal.com. Um, we use all of our social media more or less for promotion, um, just kind of promoting what we're doing, locations we're going to be going to. And if we capture something really good, I'll kind of release like a little snippet. And then I'll eventually release like a full video on our YouTube. So all of our content we put out is actually on our YouTube. We don't pull – I've stopped putting out full content on our social, so I want to kind of draw everybody to the YouTube page and – um so that's where all of our content is. And, and Life Beyond Six Feet – same thing over on all social media. Um, we actually have a YouTube channel. Um, like I said, I record via Zoom, so I upload the video portion uh, to YouTube, and I put out the audio portion to, I don't know, it's on 14 or 15 different formats, iHeartRadio, um, Google Podcast, Apple Podcast, um, Spotify, uh, you name it, it's probably on there. So <laughs> Nice. nice. Um, when, when do you drop your episodes? Um, every Sunday morning, um, okay. 6 a.m. Um, so, you know, probably it'll be 7 a.m. your time, I guess. So gotcha. yeah, 6 a.m. the mornings. Awesome. Great. Yeah. Um, Hey, Damien, we want to thank you so much for taking time out and coming on our show. Um, you have some great stories from your investigations and, you know, uh, again, sorry about your friend Keith. Uh, that's very heartbreaking, but, uh, I love how you're honoring him and, and your team honoring him. Um, but yeah, uh, we'll definitely check out your podcast. Um, we'll stay in touch, uh, through social media and I know our, you know, hopefully our listeners will, will check you guys out and I'm going to definitely look up your YouTube. I think that's going to be interesting oh, yeah, as far as, yeah. yeah, cause it sounds like you're, you got really good content, but, um, Hey, thanks for taking your time out and, uh, have a great rest of the week, man. Hey, I appreciate you guys having me on. Thank you so much. Thanks brother. Thanks Damien. We'll talk to you later. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 There you go, creepies, Mr. Damien Christie. Excellent uh, guest chat. Oh my gosh, yeah. It was the stories were impeccable. Love them. Love the stories. I um I kind of like the one with the uh the lady in white. Oh, I, did too. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. liked them all, but mm-hmm. that one was very personal. And so on being on the property and who was it he said it was siblings or somebody mm-hmm. they didn't see it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The the apparition and he's like, "What?" Didn't he mention like uh I don't know, I just Witch like or something floating mm-hmm. over top uh-huh. of the yeah. yeah, yeah. No, that I was, don't want any part of that. I'm coming up swinging. No, that 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 <laughs> type <laughs> of thing <laughs> gave me chills. I, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, actually, a few of his stories gave me chills, and that's mm-hmm. that's signs of a really good creepy. Yeah. Uh, yikes! Why well, don't you say he was Stick. locked in a vault and he got the scratches? And, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, no, he had awesome stories. I just I don't know what it is about that. Yeah, that the the property that he saw that uh, lady in white and then had the uh, the gravestones. With the uh, oh yeah, the soldier War. and mm-hmm. the and boy. boy. Yeah. yeah, see, some people don't love the creepy vibes. I love the creepy vibes. Oh, I, yeah. You know, it's just that it is. Oh, yeah. that, that weird feeling, but it's mm-hmm. like, oh, I like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was great. Uh, yeah, so check out Damian Christie of RKB Paranormal. So yeah, he was awesome. We'll have him on again. So uh, absolutely. So coming off of that, Sean, what do you have for us? I'm going to do what I'm going to consider a, a middle aged dark side. Um, and this was actually, I had uh, two other songs figured out or, um, thoughts and I went this way and you're going to love this, Nate. This one's, uh, this one's for you and, uh, Damien's going to love it too. Uh, well, no, wait a minute. You, well, you, Nate's going to love it. It's, it's for Damien's Damien. But it. I, 
You and I are going to love it too, Todd. I'm here too. I promise. You're no, going to wait till you it, hear it. It's probably Beatles, so you won't love it. It's not yeah, Beatles. I'm going to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be. It is uh, Dokken, Dream Warriors. That's one of my favorite From songs, Sweet. man. Okay, so I, this is, I told you that. So this is for you too, Todd. Well, you just said you were into, into the Freddy franchise. So. No, but, <laughs> Freddy, but, but, the, but the song in the video, this is I true. love. Mm. So Nightmare on Elm Street, part three, right? We talked about that. Mm-hmm. So I lay awake and dread the lonely nights. I'm not alone. I wonder if these uh, these heavy eyes can face the unknown. When I close my eyes, I realize you'll come my way. I'm standing in the night. I'm standing in the night alone. For, this wasn't that hard of a, a song. I can't no, screw it up too much. Mm-hmm. Forever together. This is why I need to sing it, right? <laughs> we're, the we, we're the dream warriors. warriors. Don't want to dream no more. Don't want to dream no I'm, more. I'm you guys do this part. <laughs> we're the, there you go. We're the dream warriors. And maybe tonight, maybe tonight, you'll be gone. Oh, I, yeah. I feel the touch coming over me. This is getting inappropriate, man. <laughs> I can't explain. I hear the voices calling out, calling my name. It's the same desire to feel the fire that's coming your way. I'm standing in the night alone forever together. We're the dream warriors. Don't want to dream no more. We're the dream warriors. Maybe tonight you'll be gone. We're the dream warriors. Ain't going to dream no more. And maybe tonight, maybe tonight you'll be gone. Sweet revenge, the bitter end. This time, break the spell of illusion. Bound together, waiting for you. Dream warriors don't want to dream no more we're the dream warriors maybe tonight you'll be gone with the dream warriors ain't gonna dream no more dream warriors so everybody out there singing it right ain't gonna <laughs> dream uh, it's no running through my more. head <laughs> exactly <We're the> dream- <laughs> if you haven't heard that song awesome. i don't know where you've been but uh, go out there <laughs> and listen to it because it's, oh it's con- constant Dawkin. constant radio uh uh, lineup list oh, back in 87. Yeah. Oh, yeah. My <laughs> sophomore year, and like I said, it was on the top 20 MTV list. Mm. And, oh, yeah. Oh, I loved yeah. it. I, and I love that uh, Damien was listening to that tonight on his yeah. playlist on yeah. the way home. That's pretty cool. Now, mm. you just let, let, he, let, let Nate and I sing it. Okay, start <laughs> over. <laughs> Go for it. Uh, that was good. Maybe we could, oh, yeah. I know. We can end with it. That'll be our outro. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a song that, to do that. I that, like that's that. A great, that. That that's is a great, good idea. It's a great Sean. idea. Uh, thank you for that. And uh, now, please give the second announcement. Second part of the announcements. Please. Follow us on our social media accounts. That's on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter. Uh, email us at our uh, address, makopodcast at gmail.com. That's two A's. At least you didn't say email us I at know. our email. I, you you kind of did. But. I started to. Uh, catch our weekly Tuesday yeah. Terror videos on TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram. We are on all podcast listening apps. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and give us a five-star rating and review. Leave a review if the app allows. Share the podcast with friends, family, coworkers, and anyone else you can. Uh, we sell merch of all kinds, so uh, go get you some. We offer many types of show sponsorships, oppor- or, sorry, show sponsorship opportunities for individuals and businesses. It's another way for you to support us, get your name mentioned, and or your business promoted. The sponsorship money goes right back into the show for merch giveaways, future on locations, live shows, etc. Please email us, reach out to one of us, or message us on Instagram for more information. Uh, good. Uh, <laughs> mediocre, right? I know. Not like me. <laughs> <laughs> I tripped a couple times. <laughs> oh, the sponsorship. I was like, well, everybody better. Uh, excellent. Uh, Nate. Yes. What do you have for us, sir? Uh, it's time for the Dream Warriors to get a little sleep. <laughs> so that's a wrap. <laughs> you were going to dream? <laughs> Peaceful sleep, right? <laughs> I'm in a daze. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Hey, we want to thank you, Creepies, for listening to episode 121 and our amazing guest chat with Mr. Damian Christie of RKB Paranormal. And until next time, Nate is your sound engineer, and we are your host, Todd and Sean, and we are middle-aged. And creeped out. Keep it creepy.